It's likely that the topic of graphics processing units, or GPUs, has come up during your considerations on the purchase of a gaming laptop versus the construction of a desktop gaming computer. Imagine that you have narrowed your options down to a gaming desktop computer or a gaming laptop, and that both of these options feature an RTX 3080 T graphics card. Today, Dynamic Product Review will explore the differences between laptop and desktop GPUs. In most situations, Laptops employ integrated graphics cards that are not as powerful as desktop computers. When it comes to serious gaming or video editing, the GPU on a desktop gives more power. Let's get started to learn more about this. In spite of the fact that it has a more expensive GPU and the same hardware, the laptop appears to run games more slowly. No, this is not an error. And no, the reduced amount of breathing area contained within the laptop is not the only reason why your game is running at a slower speed. Instead, We'll explain to you guys in today's video why graphics processing units, GPUs found in desktop computers, and those found in laptops are two very distinct things. How does a desktop GPU work? What people commonly refer to as a graphics card is the graphics processing unit, GPU, that is housed within a desktop computer. Their construction is really uncomplicated. A GPU die is installed in a PCB, and once there, it is linked to a PCI Express bus as well as several backports. You remove it from its packaging and slide it into the available PCI Express slot on a computer. After that, you will need to screw the PCI bracket into the chassis of your computer so that it will remain stable. After that, you will need to link an HDMI or DisplayPort cable that is connected to your GPU to a monitor. At this point, you should have an image on your monitor. As gaming has become more demanding, graphics processing units, GPUs, have adapted and grown to meet those demands. Because of this, it is not uncommon to come across graphics cards that have enormous fans and cooling systems, as well as hefty power connectors, sometimes even two or three ports depending on the power requirements of the graphics card. Desktop graphics processing units consume a lot of electricity, and as a consequence of this, they also release a lot of heat. However, this is not something that is typically an issue with desktop personal computers. They typically have plenty of room on the inside, although this might vary depending on how well the case circulates air. It allows the card to dissipate the heat that it generates, while also allowing it to breathe. What role does the GPU play in a laptop? It is very evident that a whole full-fat graphics card cannot be accommodated in a laptop, at least not without a significant number of design concessions being made. The graphics processing units found in most laptops are able to function because separate laptop GPU lineups are designed to squeeze within the narrow profile of a laptop. They need to be able to fulfill a number of requirements, such as being compact enough to fit inside a laptop, potent enough to run the most recent AAA games, and energy efficient enough to prevent the laptop from exploding despite having an embedded screen, as well as to prevent the battery from suffering a significant amount of drain. As a direct consequence of this, graphics processing units designed for laptops are fundamentally distinct from those designed for desktop computers. Efficiency in the use of power is a significant factor in this equation. It's possible that laptops will implement a variety of power-saving strategies, one of which is the retention of an integrated GPU for the purpose of conserving battery life. In the world of gaming laptops, nothing is off limits. What sets a desktop graphics processing unit apart from a laptop graphics processing unit? We have noted in the past that the most important consideration when designing GPUs for laptops, in addition to ensuring that games are played smoothly, is to maintain the lowest possible level of power consumption. While makers of laptops and SOCs take steps to control that fire, it is generally done in the most basic way in order to keep power consumption down, which is making the actual GPU weaker. There are distinct GPU product lines for desktop computers and laptops, since it is not possible to install a desktop-class graphics card like NVIDIA's RTX 3090 T in a laptop and expect everything to run smoothly. The most likely outcome is that your laptop will catch fire within the next two days and the battery will be destroyed in the process unless it is extremely thick or possesses some otherworldly ability to magically dissipate heat. However, the fact that GPUs for desktop computers and laptop computers are two independent devices may not be immediately clear to customers who are not paying attention. Take for example, the RTX 3080T graphics card. The desktop version of the graphics card stands out from the competition as being exceptional. It is a monstrously powerful machine that is capable of the highest quality 4K gaming. However, the version of the RTX 3080T designed for laptops is. In terms of performance, let's simply say it's more comparable to a desktop RTX 3070. It is still really good, but it is probably not the kind of performance you expect from a computer equipped with an RTX 3080T. 
This is especially true when you consider that a laptop equipped with an RTX 3080T can be just as expensive as a desktop PC equipped with a 3080T, or even more expensive. The convenience of portability comes at the cost of this. On a device that you can carry around with you, you can't cool things as efficiently as you could on a stationary system. Therefore, nerfing is kind of mandatory to allow things to even run. Is it possible to install a desktop GPU on a laptop? It appears that this is possible. The best aspect is that you don't have to perform any strange tricks or find any other way around the problem. However, you should be prepared to use a substantial dock. The Razer Core X could be a worthwhile investment for you if your laptop has a Thunderbolt 3 port that can accommodate an external graphics card, also known as an eGPU. It's called an external GPU or GPU, and it enables you to install a graphics processing unit, GPU, that's compatible with a desktop. You simply need to flip the top open and locate a PCI Express slot in order to install your graphics card. After that, connect it to the internal power supply using the included connector, and then use a Thunderbolt cable to link it to your laptop. If you have done everything successfully, the external graphics processing unit, eGPU, will appear on your laptop, and you will be able to use it to play games. It's not the most practical choice, and you absolutely shouldn't use it if your laptop already has graphics, unless they're damaged, or you absolutely need the extra performance. But it's a fantastic alternative for people who have older laptops or laptops that are too thin and light to have a graphics processing unit. In the same way that there is the Razer Core X, there are a lot of other options accessible from a variety of original equipment manufacturers, OEMs, you merely need to investigate the available choices and figure out which one will serve your needs in the most effective manner. It's possible that some of them may come with a graphics processing unit, GPU, already installed in them. Even while everyone would want to see performance on a laptop equivalent to that of an RTX 3080 or 3090, this just cannot happen, and there is a good reason for it. Graphics processing units, GPUs, in laptops are far slower for a good reason. The same desktop silicon cannot be used in a laptop without rapidly encountering heat restrictions, which will either prevent it from operating to its full capability or, even worse, cause it to become damaged. The bright side of this situation is that there are a few different ways to achieve performance on a laptop that is comparable to that of a desktop computer. You will, however, need a significant amount of money. Well, that's all we have for the video today. We will be right back with more such videos. If you enjoyed the video, do consider liking the video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.